long ball. Stretch, stretch, stretch. You can put it on the board. Yes. Three Master Cell live from downtown Chicago in the MTV Mobile Studio, Family MP TV. Today's show is brought to you by Legal Shield, providing legal protection and peace of mind. Legal Shield can help with traffic tickets, texting and driving, DUIs, court appearances, estate planning, even contracts given to people they don't understand, plus a whole lot more. For more information, contact Legal Shield at 213-245-1305. That's 213-245-1305. Again, 213-245-1305. Or visit online for more information at www.nocourt.us. That's no court. US. All right, a big welcome in to everybody listening in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from coast to coast. Magic 97.9 FM over in Las Vegas, KCAA, NBC News, CNBC Financial in sunny Southern California. Everybody else watching on Hotel TV. Thanks for joining us. Also on Cox, Comcast, Spectrum, Frontier, and Wow Cable. Also on Facebook, AMP TV, AAMP TV as well. Here with a couple of very special guests. In fact, Let's let them introduce themselves, and we're going to let Marjorie go first. Well, hi. It's great to be here. Well, if you'd like me to introduce myself, let's see. Um, I'm a career sports journalist, an author. Uh, I've been a college football coach, uh, owner of a minor league baseball team. I just love everything sports, so I want to get involved as much as I can. <laughs> Owner of a minor league baseball team. We're going to get into that one. And we have another very special guest who lights up the room whenever she walks in. And that would be. Oh, well, thank you, Sal. And yeah, I want to hear all about this minor league baseball team, Marjorie. <laughs> uh, that's kind of like a little hidden gem. So uh, thank you for having me, Marty Schneider. It's my second or third time back with you, Sal. So I'm glad I did not disappoint the first or second time and you invited me back. Uh, I like Marjorie, although um, I aspire to be like Marjorie as far as my writing talents. I am an author and uh, a sports fan. I did not own a minor league baseball team, but uh, my grandfather and my mother were involved in the Philadelphia Eagles professional football team. So I guess we've, you know, all kind of uh, hung out in that in that uh, special space of team ownership and so forth. So uh, I am thankful to be here with uh, the two of you. That's good stuff. So we have a former minor league baseball team owner and the family of a former NFL team on top of it, a couple of insiders, but also a couple of authors. I mean, this is a really interesting one. This was this was for the ladies and for the gentlemen, but we're going to put it for the ladies there first, because there's a lot of women that they dig sports. They like to watch sports. They don't really know what's going on, but you two really know what's going on, don't you? Well, I had to. <laughs> I became a sports writer at a very young age. And so when I started covering uh, high school and college teams, uh, it, it really developed my knowledge. But it started early on when um, my parents taught me everything they knew about sports and they both loved sports. So I grew up playing everything that was available to girls at the time. And then eventually with the Fort Worth Star Telegram became a Dallas Cowboys beat writer. And then with the uh, Dallas Morning News, I also continued to cover the NFL. So I've just fallen in love with sports, every sport, everything I could play, everything available. It's just been part of my life from the very beginning. So the Dallas Cowboys beat writer sound, this is kind of interesting. So Marnie, very closely tied to Philadelphia Eagles organization, kind of a couple of clubs that are knocking heads. Marnie, what do you think about your dear friend here working with the Dallas Cowboys organization to a degree? <laughs> well, look, I mean, I think Marjorie could survive uh, that. She could survive being a Dallas Cowboy writer writing for the newspaper there and probably covering some of the Philadelphia Eagle fans, then she can truly do anything. So I, I probably have a lot to learn from Marjorie uh, just with that. But definitely competition is great. You know, the thing is, what I love about sports is these great rivalries, these great team rivalries. Really, truly, it's exciting to watch them. You know, we want, obviously, everybody to behave themselves. But on the field, when the competition is as as amazing as it is, it really truly brings so much joy into everyone's life 
and living room. And uh, so I think it's great. And and being a sports writer, writing about the team that you love and uh, sharing all the some of the little inner secrets of the players and so forth, I, I know is uh, something hard to do when they're not winning. So uh, bravo to you, Marjorie. Oh, and I love the fact that when we met, we realized we were – from division rivals, not just different NFL teams, but division rivals. It just made it that much sweeter. <laughs> it always, well, you know, competition. And I loved as a young girl, you know, getting to go to that, you know, that was really the reward. My mom would say to me, if you do well, and if you're well behaved this year, there were other teams that, you know, other games I went to, but like that was always the highlight, the highlight game of the season was going to Dallas and getting to be in the visiting owner's box. Cause they always had, uh, Dallas Cowboy cheerleader strategically placed in the box, and they were always so sweet and pretty, and would let me, you know, uh, play with their uh, their uh, cheerleading pom poms and so forth. So it was lots of fun. Definitely a fun place to be. Oh, I bet quite a thrill for you when you were growing up. Yes. So Even they put the cheerleaders the in the owner's box, is what you're saying, Marnie? They put the cheerleaders in the owner's box too. They did. I don't know if they still do that, but yes, it was a very slick maneuver by the marketing department. Put the, the cheerleaders in the visiting owner's box. Yes. Oh, oh I'm sure it was yeah. all tech shram. I, I, well, like he was a, a brilliant. You know, the funny thing is I have such a funny story about that. And I think it was like 1982. I was uh, visiting, you know, my grandfather would go to Mexico for vacation after the Super Bowl. And so I would go down there, I'd get to bring a friend and go down there for a couple of days. Well, this one particular, I'm hoping my dogs don't bark because I see the Amazon truck. So if they do, we'll talk for a second. Uh, so, hey, Amazon, um, you owe us money because we mentioned your name on the show. I know, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So this one particular trip on the return, it was I was an unaccompanied minor and I had my friend with me and our flights got delayed and we ended up getting stuck in Dallas. And this was in 1982, there were no cell phones back then. So somehow miraculously I was able to contact my grandfather and the next thing I know the Shrams were, you know, they showed up at the airport to pick up me and my friend. Now our luggage was still stuck, you know, in the baggage area. They weren't, we couldn't get our bags. So, uh, we got back to their house and they were so gracious. Uh, we had a fun dinner, got back to the house and went into the guest bedroom. And in the guest bedroom were tons of clothes, although they were Dallas Cowboy clothes. Okay. So <laughs> it was I'm like, sure that was kid, if you're going back to Philadelphia tomorrow and you want clean <laughs> clothes after, you know, you just went to, you know, a nice Mexican restaurant for dinner, you're wearing the Dallas Cowboy sweatshirt and sweatpants and, you know, we had Dallas Cowboy clothes for days. So it was really kind of a funny thing. I was like, all right, you know, what do you do? You have to be a gracious receiver. So put on, you know, the next morning, put on my Dallas Cowboy <laughs> sweatpants and my sweatshirt and my jacket because it was February flying into Philadelphia. It was a little chilly in February and, uh, you know, got back home and we always kind of laugh. We're like, you know, it's a good thing there wasn't, you know, cell phones and paparazzi. Not that they were oh. After me back then, they would have been like, What is going on? This girl, but yeah, the Shrams were lovely and very generous and had a very good sense of humor when it came to, uh, you know, making sure that that rivalry was really part of the whole mystique. I mean, it's such a great rivalry and really part of the whole culture of the uh, Philadelphia and the Dallas Fort Worth area. Oh, yeah, it's always yeah. been terrific. And yes, you're right, the Shrams were very terrific people. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like, it sounds like. I mean, look, there isn't one particular rival that's better than another one in that division. It's, it's like they all they the players, they all get along, of course, in real life. But the teams, they have a real problem with one another because I mean, you have such big media markets. Right. And you have such passionate fans. And the, the bigger problem is Dallas has fans all over the country, whereas you have regionalized fans pretty much for the Giants, the Washington football team. I want to call them the Redskins, but I can't. And then <laughs> the, the Eagles. But the Eagles was from from my buddies that played with the Giants. They were the toughest team to play against. They were the grittiest, the grindiest. And I'm trying to understand where this brotherly love thing comes in. It just seems like it doesn't seem to come in anywhere. So in the last one minute of this segment, Marty, where does this brotherly love thing happen? 
Well, I mean, Philadelphia was uh, named after the William Penn, and but it goes way back to Greek. Philadelphia uh, is a Greek name meaning phylos, which is brother. And wait, am I? It's in my it's in my book. I should really remember it. Uh, and Adelpho. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, so Adel Philadelphia is a Greek based off the you know love and brother. That's how it became that. But it was really named after William Penn. So, but know. you know the, the the crazy part about it here is that Philadelphia is the one city that they booed Santa Claus. <laughs> That's good mythology. Is, so, you know that is good. Yes, they did. And my mother did put you know a, a jail at the bottom of Veteran Stadium with the magistrate Seamus O'Connor. Ah. You're gonna have a magistrate. It has to be named Seamus. Uh, I got something for you when we come back from break on that, Marnie. We're going. We're going to go to break here in about thirty seconds, and and over here, or actually, better yet, our home studio in Las Vegas. You know, the the Raiders are the only stadium, the new stadium, where they actually have a jail and a court. All right, we're going to be back here in just a few minutes on the circus from downtown Chicago and, and the Amp TV studio with Marjorie and Marnie. Great stories. We're going to learn more about them in just a few moments. Don't go anywhere. Lots more to come. Attention business owners, you and your customers are listening to this commercial right now. Face it, every business needs customers, even yours. The Sports Circus is a primetime nationally syndicated program that's carried on ABC, NBC, CNBC, and Westwood One News affiliates, plus CBS, Fox, and NBC sports affiliates across North America with coverage from Hawaii to New York. Also, the Sports Circus is available to the 180 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, and the Sports Circus gets about 4 million website visitors per month, which could click through your website and bring sales. The Sports Circus provides great content featuring celebrity guests from sports and entertainment to our audience every weekday, which your company could greatly benefit from by increasing your visibility, foot traffic, eyeballs to your website, and calls from potential customers. Call us right now at 702-799-9935. Again, 702-799-9935. Or email us at info at thesportscircus.com. That's info at thesportscircus.com. Drive your sales today by advertising with the Sports Circus. That's the sound of sizzling, dry-aged, USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best-in-class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all-natural, dry-aged, USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops directly to your door without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average at best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935 at 702-799-9935, 702-799-9935 or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com. Are you a small business owner or pursuing the dream of starting your own company? Do you know where to start or how to grow that existing business? The American Business Trust Company has the answers you need. The American Business Trust Company can help you with startup capital, business strategy, sales and marketing, and establishing your company with a physical location or on the internet. You decide. You bring the idea. The American Business Trust Company can help with the rest. For a free evaluation, you may visit them online at abtrustco.com. That's A-B-T-R-U-S-T-C-O.com or call them at 657-600-1876. That's the American Business Trust Company, 657-600-1876. Call them today. They can help your business right away. Ooh. 
Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Cell, live from the Amp TV studio, the mobile studio in downtown Chicago, Michigan Avenue Bridge, right behind on a beautiful day, as everybody can see. If you're watching on television, everybody listening in on the radio, just imagine a perfect clear blue day with a glorious backdrop of one of the most iconic buildings in this country. That would be the Wrigley Building on Michigan Avenue in downtown Chicago. Nice round of applause for the Wrigley Building. You've had Wrigley gum, I'm sure, at some point. Double mint, whatever, spearmint. It's all good stuff. I'm not advertising for them. And no, we don't get free gum, so don't worry about that. <laughs> all right. Big welcome back to everybody listening in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from Coast to Coast. Magic 97.9 FM over in Las Vegas. NBC News, CBC Financial in Los Angeles. WDJY down in Atlanta. Thanks for joining us, WAUD, home of the Atlanta Braves in Auburn, Alabama. KSIX, CBS Sports, down in South Texas, home of the Astros, Rockets, and Texans. Also, our friends in Faraday, Louisiana, and Natchez, Mississippi, on 107.1 The River, Mid-South Broadcasting. You ever want to learn how to catch an alligator or b- reach your hand into a tree and grab a snake? Check out redneckadventures.com. Good stuff. Jim, Bob, and the boys down there. Boy, they teach you some crazy things. All right. A big hello to our friends over in Honolulu on CBS Sports 1500. KHKA, home of the Yankees, home of the San Francisco 49ers, and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Of course, that's for everybody over there in Auburn. (laughs) We have to say it that way just because we can. Back here with Marjorie Lewis and Marnie Schneider, a couple of very interesting and lovely ladies that happen to be authors. They happen to be sports insiders. A very interesting dialogue. I'm Folks, you don't really get this kind of dialogue on a regular basis, but maybe you will between these two ladies. As a matter of fact, Marnie, what are you thinking? Thinking maybe you and Marjorie should maybe put a show together? <laughs> You know, that is a great idea. I, I would love to do that with Marjorie. <laughs> so sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sal. Uh, we can, you know, share the news right now that uh, Marjorie and I have decided that we are going to be doing our own podcast and we're very excited about it. We think that we can uh, enlighten each other and perhaps a few others along the way. So, Join in, and uh, Marjorie will, uh, I think, help will hopefully enlighten me on many things. And uh, I'm I'm looking forward to being a, a let's see, her co-host and sharing some great sports knowledge with a uh, future audience. What I think is going to be fun about it too is uh, we've got Marnie growing up in the uh, owner's box, and and my experience in the press box, and so we'll get different perspectives. And like you said, we, we know a lot of people, so we'll be able to bring on some very interesting guests from time to time to join us on our podcast. And I think we'll have a fresh outlook, something that uh, is a little bit different for everybody to listen to. I'm looking forward to launching it. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing it. Of course, that's going to be produced by Amp TV, correct? That's correct. Yeah. And that's Doesn't all ages media programming television for all you keep in score. Amp TV. Look at the logo in the upper right corner. That's Amp TV. Check them out at amptv.com or at double A-M-P dot TV. Let me see if I can spit that one out. Double A-M-P dot TV. People always have me saying uh, different websites and advertisements for them and whatnot. And hey, listen, it's live. We record it live. We air it live. It depends on where you're at live. Right. Because we're all over the clock in different locations. Sometimes it's just straight live on location and sometimes it's in a studio like right now. I'm in the mobile studio and they're in their home studios. It's all good stuff, folks. But listen to this. Here's a lady that owned a minor league baseball team, which I want to hear about that. Then we have the granddaughter of the owner of the Philadelphia Eagles at one point in her life. Also an equestrian superstar. I've seen her jump horses. I've seen pictures and whatnot. Of course, I want to hear more about that. But let's start out with the baseball team ownership. This is really unusual. Marnie, I think you and I both want to hear a little bit about this from Marjorie, don't we? Absolutely. Well, I just like seeing sports from every angle, from the press box, from the owner's box, uh, from the fans uh, sitting in the stands. And so a few years back, I decided that I wanted to get the experience of owning a minor league baseball team. So I jumped on board with the Continental Baseball League, and it's an independent league. And it was a low level A ball. Um, We had a team in McKinney, Texas, the McKinney Blue Thunder. And it was an interesting experience. Curtis Wilkerson, a former Texas Ranger, was our manager. 
And uh, we recruited a lot of kids from around Texas primarily, but they were from all over the place. And I got to see what it was like on the inside of, of ownership. Some of the things like, let's just say you have a game in Corpus Christi and somebody strikes out at a crucial point and decides to take a baseball bat to the water fountain in the dugout and blast that thing to smithereens. Well, of course, <laughs> there's a bill to be paid. So uh, I learned a lot about it was sitting in a in an owner's box and enjoying the sh the show. It was a lot of financial commitment, but it was an interesting experience. I, I liked it. I didn't do it for too long because the uh, the uh, uh, the economy got bad around 07 and things started to take a turn. And so the Continental League didn't last, but it was a great experience and I'm glad I did it. So you, you were in the owner's box. You were the owner. Did you have the ability to maybe change the team name if you wanted? What was the latitude you were given as the owner? Well, I was one of the owners. And so I just came on, we had already had a lot of marketing. The team had already won the, 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 the league title a year before. Uh, it was still a little bit unsettled because some teams were moving from location to location and all, but I felt like at the time that I came on board, it was pretty well established. So we stuck with the McKinney Blue Thunder and uh, went with that. Marnie, I think if I had you had a few other team, ideas, what would you name it? It was too late. <laughs> if I had a baseball team, what would I name it? Well, I would... I, it would, I would have to probably do a, a general consensus of what seemed appropriate and relevant in the, in the area. If it was already named, I don't know. I have not thought about that, Sal. You know, really? if I had a chance to change it, I would have gone with something like the pilots or the aviators, something like that because of the, the airlines that are in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And so when you say something appropriate to the area, I had considered things like the pilots and the aviators. I thought that would be kind of fun. My favorite names for minor league teams, there's two of them. Actually, I, I probably have about four of them. My, my favorite one, my favorite mascot is the Montgomery Biscuit. Is it's the Buttermilk Biscuits, oh. <laughs> right? And I have a hat. It's the it's the Tampa Bay Rays triple or double A team, and they play in the Southern League. And it's actually an animated biscuit with big eyeballs and the tongue is a slab of butter. I mean, it's oh, hilarious. That's <laughs> you know, it's the probably my favorite isotopes. one. Isotopes. You know, Albuquerque has one. Albuquerque got fun. the isotopes. Yeah. Yeah. Isotopes. That's yeah. That's, that's the Rockies AAA team. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Jacksonville is the jumbo shrimp. That they are. Yeah. The Joliet team, India independent team from suburban Chicago is the slammers because of the jail. Right. <laughs> and their and their mascot is a jailbird. It's great. It's wearing wearing the stripes. It's one of the funniest things ever. But prior to the the slammers, they were known as the jackhammers because all the road construction. The Julia jackhammers, probably my favorite name of all time out of all those. But the J Jacksonville jumbo shrimp is a great one. Yes, and the, um, yeah, the mighty muscles are in Fort Myers. So There's a team called the Yalls in. Uh in Kentucky and I have really? a t-shirt just because I like y'alls. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know they had a team named the y'alls. <laughs> I, gotta, I yeah. gotta get one of those hats. What, what's on the hat? I mean, is it like Huckleberry Hound or something? I mean, what can possibly be on there? Yeah, I don't know. I have a friend that goes to the games and she posted a picture one day and when I saw it was the y'alls, I just ordered a t-shirt online, but I had to look at the hats. That'd be interesting. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, well, right. in Augusta, there are the Green Jackets, the minor league team, which makes sense after the golf course, the, the Augusta Green Jackets. And then in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania, there's the um, Iron Pigs, uh, which are a Phillies affiliate in Western Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Out here in Grand Prairie, they had the uh, Air Hogs. That was, that was a, a fun. Uh, minor league too. baseball is so much fun to go see. And for all those people that don't know about it, minor league games are fantastic. It's kind of like the purest form of baseball is little league, but fast a ball rookie league is probably the best version of professional baseball to see. Cause everybody throws a hundred miles an hour. Everybody is running really fast. Everybody's really trying hard and they're not stuck 
in triple A somewhere or in double A saying, I can't get out of this. I can't get out. They're all trying to advance. And you're all, as a fan, you're close to the action. And I love the atmosphere of minor league baseball. So when my husband and I were raising our two daughters, every summer when we went on vacation, no matter where we were, we found a minor league baseball game. And some of the stadiums that we saw were just incredible. Some were, you don't know how they can play baseball there. Uh, It was just really interesting to see the different minor league uh, parks. Marnie, in the last 30 seconds of the segment or so, actually the last minute, tell me about the best stadium food experience maybe even with the magic shell cherry on top of the ice cream cone what's the best food experience you've had in any stadium kansas city i still that was quick about kansas city when i was you know younger we would we didn't play kansas city that often but getting the food experience in kansas city and that stadium arrowhead was way ahead of the curve I mean, going to Texas City was always great and fun, but Arrowhead was amazing. That's amazing. I want to hear more about that when we come back from break. Don't go anywhere. Last more to come about stadium food and whatnot with Marjorie and Marnie, a couple of very interesting ladies. Don't go anywhere. Last more to come here on The Circus. Attention business owners, you and your customers are listening to this commercial right now. Face it, every business needs customers, even yours. The Sports Circus is a primetime nationally syndicated program that's carried on ABC, NBC, CNBC, and Westwood One News affiliates, plus CBS, Fox, and NBC sports affiliates across North America with coverage from Hawaii to New York. Also, the Sports Circus is available to the 180 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, and the Sports Circus gets about 4 million website visitors per month, which could click through your website and bring sales. The Sports Circus provides great content featuring celebrity guests from sports and entertainment to our audience every weekday, which your company could greatly benefit from by increasing your visibility, foot traffic, eyeballs to your website, and calls from potential customers. Call us right now at 702-799-9935. Again, 702-799-9935. Or email us at info at thesportscircus.com. That's info at thesportscircus.com. Drive your sales today by advertising with the Sports Circus. Do you own a timeshare? Well, face the facts. You made a mistake. You made a bad purchase. A timeshare is not an investment. It's a money pit that continues forever. If you use your timeshare, that's great. But if you don't and you want to legally get out of your contract, call my friends right now at the Timeshare Exit Hotline. They're an experienced team of lawyers who help good people like you get out of a timeshare contract that they just don't want. Don't throw away your money on maintenance fees. Use it for things you really want. We can help you end your timeshare contract and stop the money drain immediately. If you're ready to move on with your timeshare, call our team right now. Cancel your timeshare now with a free call. 800-741-9557. 800-741-9557. 800-741-9557. That's 800-741-9557. So, you want to be in show business. Do people tell you that you're really funny, you have a great personality, and you should have your own talk show? Many of us have been told that, but we don't know how to get started. It's easier than you think. Let the pros at Cali Vegas give you a free talent evaluation. Call 949 445 1119 and learn how quickly you can create, produce, and host your very own talk show. Imagine not having to sit in traffic every day, commuting back and forth to the same old boring job. Get started in television or radio today with your free talent evaluation from Cali Vegas. Call 949-445-1119 or visit them online at calivegas.com. Make your dream come true today and create your new career and learn how to become a television or radio star with the help of Cali Vegas. 949-445-1119. Call now. You're listening to the Sports Circus, and I'm Mike Golick. Hi, it's... 
it's Marnie Schneider, and we're back on AMP TV. I've got Fumble the Dog with me. Fumble is my co-star in Football Freddy and Fumble the Dog Game Day in the USA. And you can find our books at mascot.com or on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm also really excited to be introducing the fact that Marjorie Lewis and I are going to be doing a podcast of our own very soon. And Marjorie is joining us today. Right, Sal? Absolutely. <laughs> Big round of applause for Marty Snyder and Marjorie Lewis, a couple of very interesting ladies. Big welcome back to the Sports Circus on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from coast to coast. Of course, Magic 97.9 FM over in Las Vegas. We always call them out because it's one of our home studios, just like in Los Angeles. Our flagship station is NBC News and CNBC Financial in sunny Southern California, 106.5, 102.3 FM, and 10.50 AM. And everybody else that's listening from coast to coast on our independence on television, or if you're watching us in hotels, thanks for joining us. Also on Facebook and uh, AMP TV, double AMP dot TV, as well as Cox Comcast Frontier Spectrum and Wow Cable. Also Frontier as well. Did I say Frontier? Not really sure. Anyway, it's live, folks. Anything could happen. All right, back with the ladies. Heard a little bit about minor league baseball. That was kind of fun because, of course, Marjorie was an owner of a minor league baseball team, and uh, they're both authors. And of course. Marnie being in the owner's box from the Eagles. I mean, that's a whole nother thing. We started hearing about stadium food because Marnie's had that opportunity to travel to a lot of stadiums and try some of the food. And people don't really know which ones are great, which ones aren't. I asked her right, right away and she said, boom, Kansas City. It was the one. And so they they are ahead of the curve, Marnie. But what other stadiums have great food and which ones you absolutely want to avoid? Well, I like cheese, so I always had a great time in Green Bay also. <laughs> so and, uh, they would give you, when you would go there, they would present you with a box. And in this box was all different types of amazing Wisconsin cheese. So it wasn't necessarily a pretty a fancy uh, you know, offering, but it was a great offering because you'd get this box filled with cheese and some crackers and you were off to the races. Well, well, let me ask you a question real quick on that, because I know where, where that stadium is, where Lambeau is. I mean, that's right at the, the southern edge, if you will, of Door County, which is famous for cherry everything. Phenomenal cherry everything. I, 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 I love Door County. What a great place. Nice round of applause for Door County. I hope everybody can hear that applause. Did everybody hear that applause? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Guess what? Because now we're going to give them the super applause. <laughs> and the reason being, I mean, look, whether it's Cherry ice cream, cherry pie, cherry strudel. Life is better with cherries on top. And so I would imagine that Green Bay would probably put something in there with cherries because you're right there, like the, the cherry capital of the upper Midwest. Well, that I would not know. But I do know that Dairy Queen has a very good uh, red cherry magic shell. Very unhealthy. Very, very unhealthy. I, I try to keep my... Uh, my sugar intake, you know, my mom has dementia, so I've learned a little bit over the past couple of years that sugar, although I love sugar, is a very uh, dangerous thing to really have a lot of. But when I do indulge, it would be in a shamrock shake from McDonald's because that <laughs> promote the Ronald McDonald house, so I can do that. And a red dipped ice cream cone from Dairy Queen. So when you call me, that's the picture that comes up on my telephone. <laughs> yes, it's it's you with that red dipped ice cream cone. I love that. Hey, tell me about the Ronald McDonald House. What's your So about? the Ronald McDonald House is a charity that is very near and dear to my heart. My grandfather and a few other amazing people in 1974, 47 years ago, opened up the very first Ronald McDonald House in Philadelphia. And so now there's over 365 Ronald McDonald houses all over the world. It's incredible the growth that the Ronald McDonald house has had, mostly because of amazing people and volunteers and, and, it, and there's been a huge need from it. So I serve on the board of our local Ronald McDonald house and I'm chairing our jerseys and jewels, which is our upcoming fund, big fundraiser event on November 13th, which will be at Bank of America Stadium. So I'm very excited about that. And I love the Ronald McDonald House. I've been able to 
make a lot of beautiful friends that work in the Ronald McDonald House and meet a lot of families that have benefited from the Ronald McDonald House. And so I'm just really super grateful that not only does it exist, because I've heard all sorts of amazing stories, but that I can also participate and be hopefully added value to the Ronald McDonald House. So in the opening segment, you had talked a little bit about a book or a series of books that you write as well. Game Day in the USA. I want to hear a little bit more about the puppy because you're holding a puppy and tell everybody a little bit more about the books. There he Spongle. is. Uh, here's Fumble, the dog. There he is. Right <laughs> All right. Uh, watching so, that dog sticks his tongue out naturally. It's just that way. Right. He does. Yes. Sweet boy. So growing up in professional football, my mother worked for my grandfather, my mom, Susan, an amazing lady, is the first and only female to have ever been a general manager, vice president, and legal counsel of a professional football team. So I'm very proud of my mom's amazing accomplishments and everything she did to encourage women to get out there and be in sports and be participating in sports. And as a young girl, I had the privilege, an incredible privilege and opportunity to travel around with my mom and grandfather to all sorts of amazing cities, like going to Dallas-Fort Worth to see a Philadelphia Eagles-Dallas Cowboys game. And what I learned was there were amazing things that happened in those cities. So obviously football is amazing and learning a little bit about football, I think, is the universal language. And when kids and people can speak sports, it brings everybody together. So that's first and foremost. But what I really wanted to do through Football Freddy, and Freddy's a girl kind of based loosely off me and fumbled the dog, who really is my dog, share my love for travel, tourism, history, traditions that happen in a city, and share that so that if somebody is curious about the Dallas-Fort Worth area, but they might live in the Carolinas, well, they can get a copy of Football Freddy and Fumble the Dog game day in Dallas-Fort Worth and learn all about the amazing, fun things that happen in that area. Or they can pick up a copy of Game Day in Philadelphia and learn about history, Ben Franklin, the National Constitution Center, all sorts of different things. So currently, I've written eight books over the past three and a half years, Philadelphia, the Carolinas, it's two states, one team. Atlanta, which really covers Georgia, the great city of Pittsburgh. I grew up in Philadelphia, but I went to Penn State and have lots of friends in Western Pennsylvania. I love Western Pennsylvania. Very different than Eastern PA, amazing place. Uh, Green Bay, Chicago, where you are right now, Sal. So uh, all sorts of fun places to visit in Chicago. Dallas, Fort Worth, and our newest book, Game Day in Tampa Bay. And in that book, we actually, in each book, with the exception of Philadelphia, Freddie has a tour guide to show her around. So they're all based loosely off of or directly off my friend's children. So in Game Day in Pittsburgh, Freddie's tour guide is a young man named Hugh. He was autistic. Hugh's mother, Stacy, was my college roommate at Penn State, my Tridelta sorority sister. And he was amazing. He knows everything about Pittsburgh and having autism doesn't slow him down. So it was really fun to highlight him. But in Game Day in Tampa Bay, we featured a, a young man named Fred. So it's Freddie and Fred. And Fred has cerebral palsy. And Fred had spent over a year at the Ronald McDonald House in Tampa Bay. So it was a great privilege to be able to have Fred and Freddie tour around Pittsburgh. And they moved from Brazil to Tampa Bay years ago uh, when Fred was first diagnosed. And they're still in Tampa Bay. And they're huge advocates of the area. And, uh, they're, and, and they're just great people. Great stuff. So in our last couple of minutes of the segment, real quick, people could pick these books up. Where can they find them? At mascot.com. They could go to Game Day in the USA and order them directly from there. They could go to Amazon or Barnes and Noble. And mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty much it. I guess they could email they could email me or they could but uh, game day in the USA.com and we can direct them to that or Amazon, which is the usual place. People go to buy Marty, I, I know you're going to have to jump off at the end of the segment here in just a couple of minutes. How can people follow you as well? Oh, that is a great question, Sal. They can go to Instagram. And on Instagram, I'm Marnie Schneider one on Instagram. They could go to Facebook and it is just me, Marnie Schneider. I'm on LinkedIn. If they want to follow football, Freddie and fumble the dog on Instagram or game day in the USA on Facebook. So those are the, Game Day in the USA, if you type that in, you'll usually find me uh, or just Marnie Schneider, and you'll be able to follow me and follow along with Fumble and I as we travel around to all these great cities that have football teams. 
That's great stuff. And also, we're going to have that upcoming podcast with you and Marjorie. Marjorie, don't worry. You're not lost in the shuffle here. We're going to spend a lot of time with you in the last segment because I know Marnie has to run for a Ronald McDonald House function after this segment. But at the same time, we have that upcoming podcast. And what's the name of that again? The podcast is called Upon Further Review with Marjorie and Marnie. All right. That's, that's good stuff. It. We're going to... We're going to look forward to that. It's probably going to launch in just a couple of weeks. So, folks, stay tuned on that one. And, of course, we're going to make sure we plug it a little bit more. Maybe we'll bring these two lovely ladies back right before it starts again, just because we can. It's a fun conversation. It's great because what do we have to do for show prep? <laughs> right? Just, just being honest. We can talk about just about anything. But it's engaging because it's a couple of ladies that really know sports. And, Marjorie, we're going to dig into this a little bit deeper with you in the next segment. And, Marnie, always a pleasure having you on. And, of course, we want to wish you the best of luck with your meeting that's coming up at the top of the hour. Thank you. Well, it's for auction items because, like I said, our event is Saturday, November 13th. So though we're, we're really down to the, the final little details. And it's all about the details. And as Coach Ramil would say, to do big things, you got to do big things. So we're doing big things, events, a lot of money. And I love you, Marjorie. I love you, Sal. So thank you. And we love you too. And we'll talk to you soon. Folks, don't go anywhere. Lots more to come here on the circus. Back in a few minutes. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm Roy Firestow. Now it's time to throw it back to Sal. My favorite one had to do with the Green Bay Packers. And I love the fact that they dealt off Ty Montgomery because of a blown assignment. Green Bay isn't Green Bay unless they have a good running game. Then they can win 10 Super Bowls. The fact is, you don't have a running game. You've got 70% passing, and that's not where Aaron Rodgers needs to be. He needs to be in a position where he's got a running game to offset the passing game and so forth. I like the move. Green Bay didn't have a running game anyway, so all they're doing is saying, we're going to get rid of you because you don't follow instructions. Well, he made one of the most boneheaded plays I've ever seen. There's two minutes and five seconds on the clock. They traded him they on Tuesday. They should have caught him on Sunday he night. He should have been on the plane back to Green Bay. Right, they should have made him walk back yeah, to Green Bay. No, it was a terrible play. Now, he's not a stupid guy. He went to Stanford. Really? He's not a dumb guy. He's not a dumb guy, but he doesn't he, follow instructions. He made a terrible play. The fact is he didn't follow instructions. And you say he's not a dumb guy. His own agenda he put ahead of his team. I agree. Thus, he is a dumb guy, right or wrong? Wrong. He just got selfish. You're not going to convince me that a guy from Stanford is a dumb dumb. No! <laughs> uh, yeah, this is uh, Sidney Justin from the Miracles. So you heard yesterday's show at Roy Firestone. You think you hear a little clip about him going into the office where Smokey was at? And that was really good material, wasn't it? Yeah, that was really funny, man. Yeah, and then you heard him. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. It was cool, though. It was cool. Really cool story, man. I, I enjoyed listening to that. Right, and then he gave a little bit of a couple of bars. Can you give us a couple of more from Ooh Baby Baby? And let's see if you could do it better than Roy Firestone. <laughs> Come on, man. All right, you know what? Why not? Uh... I did you wrong, my heart went out to play, but in the game I lost you, what a price to pay, hey, I'm crying, ooh, baby, baby. How's that, man? Is that okay? Is that good enough? That's incredible. That's fantastic. You know why? Because that's what you do. You're in the incredible business, Sid. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> Only at the sports circus. You're going to get sports? You get music? Hi, this is Tom Dreesen, and you're listening to the sports circus with my pal, Sal. And no one does it better.
back to the Sports Circus. I'm Marjorie Lewis, author of When the Men Were Gone. This is a novel that is based on a true story of a woman by the name of Tylene Wilson. She coached football in Brownwood, Texas during World War II. And I happened to find out about her just through sheer serendipity, got the book written, and I always felt that she and I had lived sort of parallel lives, even though she was a coach in the 1940s and I was a sports writer in the 19, beginning in the 1980s. All right, that's good stuff. That's really good stuff. And you could find that book. Where can you find that? Well, it's pretty much everywhere. You can find it, of course, through the publisher at harpercollins.com, through Amazon, through Barnes & Noble. You can get it online at, at Walmart or Target. It's pretty much available anywhere. And of course, with independent booksellers. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. So how did you, how did you, were you a journalist major in college? Is this how you got into the writing side of things? How did this work? I was. I was a broadcast journalist major in college at Arizona State University. And uh, after I graduated, I saw a job posting for a sports writer. And I hadn't really thought about print, but I thought I'd go for it and see if I liked it. And I did. So I had a little experience in broadcast with the CBS affiliate in Phoenix. But when I got into sports writing, I fell in love with writing. And so I knew that that was the, the path I wanted to take instead of uh, going into sports casting or something like that. And I got to go all over the place. Uh, Marty talked about the food at all different stadiums. I went to all the stadiums too, but uh, the food was a little bit different because they had us in the cafeteria in the press box. So <laughs> it, was, it right. was not like what she was talking about. <laughs> well, yeah, when you're sitting in the owner's box, something tells me you're going to get like you know, <laughs> giant steaks and whatnot in there. Of course, you're going to get the cheese platter if you're in Green <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bay. Right? We weren't getting if cheese you're platters. The, <laughs> right. If you're in, in the stadium somewhere, they're going to give you something maybe a little bit less than what the owner's box is giving i don't know it's <laughs> yeah, just my own yeah. idea yeah, yeah, exactly. just a little bit but nonetheless great experiences and you've had that great experience from a sports writer standpoint right so you walk in with your media card right i, I do the same thing yeah, i don't ever remember getting those kinds of platters and whatnot yeah, I, anyway, it doesn't <laughs> no. matter but it's a great experience from the media side versus the owner side because the media side even if you're going to to see your home team, the team that you love, you can't root for them, right? You've got to be impartial. Right. And I had to learn how to just sit quietly, some big interception, some big turning point in the game, and I just sit there and not respond, just write down, take notes, get ready to write about it. And then later when my children were growing up and, they, and I was going to their events, I, I had to teach myself how to cheer again. And it was very strange. <laughs> It was that's, very, that's very true. That's it's very true, folks. In case you don't realize this, when you go in as a member of the media, of course, you you have to be like a regular TV broadcaster. You can't root for your team. You have to be impartial. Oh, right. That's right. And that's sometimes you have in the press box if you start to root. That's right. A huge they'll, no. they'll get you out in just a hot second. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the and the, you can't even go like yes. I mean, you no. can't even no fist pumping, no nothing. You just have to do it like. Yes. You've got to have that yeah. poker face. Yeah, you just got to. It's sit there very with your difficult. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. it's very very difficult but to once do. Once you I mean, learn me, it, it's hard to unlearn. I can't see. That's that's this is my problem. I would rather buy a ticket and go in as a fan, and and not hold myself back, than you know here you know being in Chicago. I go, me going to a White Sox game. It's so difficult for me to not root for my club, going to see the Chicago Blackhawks, right? Or the Bulls. It's very difficult for me not to root for my home team. Now, if I walk into Wrigley Field, I always root against the Cubs. They crushed me when I was a kid. They crushed me. They will never get me back. Never. No, and it's it's, it's a personal thing. It's a silly thing, but it's not a silly thing. Imagine oh, this, Mark. makes it all fun. Well, imagine this. When you're a kid, the teams that you grow up with and you grow up loving. I, I rooted for both clubs, right? The both North Siders and South Siders right here in Chicago. But then you see the players, the the Rick Mondays, you see the the Bill Madlocks, you see the Jose Cardinals, you see the Ivan De Jesus, you see the Ron, you, you see all the players that you grow up liking end up migrating to other teams because the home team, the ownership, 
doesn't care enough to keep them or they don't want to spend a little bit of money to keep them. And we're seeing the funny thing is we're seeing the same thing right here in Chicago with what's going on on the north side again where the ownership, in my opinion, that's the key, in my opinion, what I have seen is the ownership is essentially abandoning the businesses around Wrigleyville where Wrigley Field wow. is. Uh -huh. And they said, you know, we don't care. We're going to fire sale the team. We don't care what product we put on the field. And all the local businesses are suffering because of it, because there's not as many fans coming out to the games. So the restaurants and bars and clubs and whatnot, all these companies that came to Wrigleyville specifically because they were depending on that flow from the crowd. Now they have a lesser crowd. They're spending less money. They don't care anymore. It's back to the 1970s again for the Chicago Cubs. And it hurts the business owners. So in my opinion, the ownership of the Cubs really dropped the ball by not committing to the community that they have built around Wrigley Field. You hit it right there when you said community, because that's what it should be all about. And so when you deny that experience to the community, that's that's really disappointing. That's one of the things about even in my in my novel, it, it was about a small town where a football team a high school football team is the largest gathering place in the community and and people feel a sense of pride and that's how i feel about every team that people root for it should be about community and when it when you get away from that it's a little disappointing well like in that movie hoosiers right i mean the whole town was surrounded by basketball high school basketball everything and once that goes down the toilet what do you have left imagine being uh, in a small town you own a manufacturing plant of some sorts and you close the plant and you, you essentially create a ghost town because you actually have a responsibility, a fiduciary responsibility to the community because you're employing all these people, just like the team ownership does. Even in the case that I had mentioned up on the North side of Chicago, right here, it drives me crazy when the ownership doesn't have accountability. Right, right. Yes, I think that Jerry Jones has made a lot of money, obviously, and the Cowboys are a very corporate team. But but they're also he's managed to keep them still in as a community team. I think people right. in the community feel feel very locked in with the Cowboys, very uh, loyal. Uh, it's been a long time since they've won a Super Bowl, but but you don't see a sense of losing that enthusiasm. So right. there's a, there's a way to do that and still be successful in a lot of different areas. Yeah, and I think that the team ownership should maintain some, well, some semblance of responsibility to the community. They should show the community that they really want to be a part of the community and not just their money. Agree or disagree? Oh, absolutely, yes. And I, that's another thing I think the Cowboys have done well. Whether it was during the Jerry Jones or the Tech Shram Tom Landry era, they have always been uh, putting the community at, at a big, uh, you know, in, in focus. They've kept that the eye on the community. Right. I think that's so important. And, and let's face it, even when you're writing a novel, think about this. You don't want to alienate people from your novel. You want to gather in the people that you wouldn't necessarily think would purchase the novel in the first place. Oh, gosh. Right? Isn't so, that the truth? Yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I mean, look, it makes the dogs bark every now and then yeah, when you hear exactly. something that just doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> seem to resonate, right? So then you're, you're going to get the natives up in a, in a big yeah. opera. It's exactly well, what's going on. You know, it's, it's, this book has been, yeah, I think the dogs, uh, they must have seen a squirrel. But um, the thing is that I wrote this book knowing that people in Texas might find it interesting because it's Texas high school football in the 1940s. Next thing you know, I'm getting emails from Australia. I'm getting, uh, uh, I, I, my agent tells me that they're, they're translating it to, to Portugal because they wanted it translated in their wow. country. And I'm thinking, really? You know, people in Australia and people in Portugal have really fallen in love with this story. And so I think a lot of it is because it resonates not just to football, but it's a life journey about perseverance and it's inspirational. And, and it even gets my dogs excited just thinking about the life that Tylene lived. Well, it's exciting because it touches the lives of so many in so many different ways on top of it. So it doesn't matter what corner of the earth you're in for all you people that think that the earth happens to be flat. 
Uh, you know, that, that, that kind of makes me laugh. You know, here is the flat earth thing. And then every other planet is round. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But the point is, wherever you're at in the world, you can identify with the story because the story does resonate with everybody, doesn't it? Yes, yes, because it is. It's a, it's a woman who's very resilient. And let me tell you a little anecdote. When I was covering the Dallas Cowboys, my first year, I went out to training camp in Thousand Oaks, California. It was my first day and the team was on the field. I'm taking notes and... One of the things I was going to do after I, after the day was write about who I thought looked like they had a chance to make the team. It was mostly rookies and free agents. And so when I was walking away from the field, I hear these uh, cleats coming up real fast behind me. And so I figure somebody's trying to catch up. I, I turn around, I look to my left, and this rookie football player passes me. He, he looks me in the eyes and he says, you don't belong here. So I thought of his practice and the notes I had just taken. And I said, well, I'm going to be here a lot longer than you are. <laughs> I just watched, I just watched you practice. <laughs> so that's a great line. He, he was eventually cut the next day. I never saw him again, but, but that's part of what this Tylene's journey was. There were people who didn't believe she belonged in football and she was resilient. She was a student of the game. And she won everybody over. And it's a beautiful story. And I'm glad I was the one who got to write it. Well, I think that's a great story in itself. But more importantly, people can identify with something that, again, it doesn't really matter where you're from. It just matters what the content is. So remember, content, content, content. Yes. Look, we have to keep people engaged with thought-provoking content, whether they're reading it, whether they're watching it, or whether they're listening maybe to an audio book, right? Something to that effect. But ultimately, with your upcoming podcast with Marnie Schneider, and I believe it's going to be called Upon Further Review. Is that not correct? That's right. Upon Further Review with Marjorie and Marnie. All right. That's going to be coming up. Oh, and maybe just a handful of weeks. We're going to make sure that everybody here on the Sports Circus and Amp TV knows about it. We're going to plug the heck out of it because a couple of really nice people and a really sharp people, too, that both light the room up when they walk in. We can see that. <laughs> We're both so stuff. excited. Yeah, we're both really excited about launching this. Well, we're excited to have it because it gives us a little bit of diversity here on Mid-South Broadcasting and AMP TV as well. So that's really going to work out well. well speaking All right. of diversity, my middle my my maiden name is Herrera. So, you know, we've got a, <laughs> another go. piece of diversity there. <laughs> All right. We like that. All right. Well, for... Marjorie Lewis, and for Marty Snyder, I'm your ringmaster, Sal, and we'll see you next time right here on your favorite station. Until then, so long, everyone. business owner or pursuing the dream of starting your own company? Do you know where to start or how to grow that existing business? The American Business Trust Company has the answers you need. The American Business Trust Company can help you start up with capital, business strategy, sales, and marketing, and establish your company with a physical location or an online presence on the internet. You decide. You bring the idea. Then American Business Trust can help with the rest. For a free evaluation, Visit them online at abtrustco.com. That's abtrustco.com. Or call them at 657-600-1876. That's American Business Trust Company. 657-600-1876. Call them today. They'll help your business right away. That's American Business Trust Company. Online at abtrustco.com. American Business Trust Company.